So I'm a bit behind on my Zanzibar updates. Uh, really haven't done too many of these since I've gotten here. Stonetown has been surprisingly good and safe and pleasant. Walking around the streets when you first get here, it feels quite intense. You know, you have these very old, kind of, I want to describe them as Arabic, uh, uh, winding, narrow alleyways and streets that are, are quite intimidating uh, at first. But then over time you realize that they are, uh, they're quite safe, at least within the core tourist part of the, uh, of the city. Uh, even going down to the harbor and other areas like that that I thought would be really uncomfortable to visit uh, and felt quite out of place in uh, were super safe and good. Uh, then I went up to Kendwa, uh, which is a, a gorgeous beach, absolutely gorgeous beach, amazing white sand and everything else, but uh, very quiet and uh, much more suited to couples and uh, everything of that sort. So it was actually for, for a solo travel traveler, I'd say Zanzibar in general has been a fairly poor destination. Um, it's very hard to book. You can't use any of the traditional booking sites. The only way to find a lot of the bookings is Airbnb. Uh, the only hostels are, are here in uh, basically here in Stonetown and even those are a little hard to find so a lot of people don't end up booking with them. Uh, so the end result is, uh, you know, I've found people to interact with, but most are on tours or parts of groups and doing things. So it's been, uh, it's been good. Uh, for the most part, people have been really friendly and very helpful. Uh, there is a good bit more kind of uh, street annoyance and kind of hassle than you would get in a lot of other places uh, in like Southeast Asia and whatnot, but I guess it goes with uh, the highly touristic nature of kind of these areas. Uh, the beaches are gorgeous. Uh, the food has been disappointing. Can't really do the street food for safety reasons. Uh, at least after walking through some of the marketplaces and just the hygiene culture is, hygiene culture, is, uh, is not as strong here. Uh, it creates a lot of issues, which I don't think we're in Southeast Asia. So I think in, in kind of, in summary, it's, it's a, it's a very special mixture here in Zanzibar between the Middle East and Africa, a synergy between the two, which is very interest, interesting to come and see and experience and spend some time with. Um, and there's a lot of culture, a lot of skill, a lot of dancers, art, performance, all of these different things, right, that makes it a pretty a fascinating place. And you get a, a great blend of cultures and music and things like that. But at the same time, it's also a very expensive place. It's a very difficult place to, uh, to travel as a solo traveler, uh, needing to take taxis, or you can do the, the budget local uh, transit, but uh, also, again, it's, it's not as, uh, you know, it's not as convenient to get around. And uh, it's probably double the price, triple the price of a lot of other places, because it's so many all-inclusive resorts and things of that nature. Uh, so for like a romantic getaway, I think it's probably a great place. It's a, an interesting place for independent solo travelers. Uh, but I think I would steer people probably, at least right now, uh, towards Southeast Asia if they were choosing between the two. Because even though the beaches are perhaps not quite as charming, uh, there's still very good beaches and there's just so much more budget-friendly solo travel infrastructure uh, and culture uh, there for exploring and spending time with. So it's been a very good trip. Uh, it really is beautiful, it had some amazing photos, uh, but uh, a mixed bag. It definitely has not been what I expected. I thought it was gonna be a great solo traveler's destination, if a bit challenging. Um, but all said and done, it is Christmas Eve, so I am going to enjoy my last 24 hours here in Zanzibar and uh, signing off.